Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Under suspicion, movie thoughts. Like I said in the review, uh, Henry is a man who really gets on people's nerves. Rich, owning a mansion, as a tax attorney, you know, this, this is a position that everybody hates. And like he says himself, he's not, you know, he's not particularly attractive. He's not a genius. You know, he's mediocre. And mediocre people hate when other mediocre people, and not the glamorous, become successful. And yeah, he's just, he's unapologetic, he doesn't rationalize his situation, he just, he's aware of it, and nothing else really happens there. And when, and, and you know, over the course of it, he, you know, gradually loses more and more of his dignity and the control of the situation. And at times, you know, you're almost taking pleasure in seeing him fall apart. Some, some might take pleasure, and I completely understand. You know, he is sand inside a bathing suit, and when you add suspicion to that, people, including some of the viewers, are gonna think he did something awful. Because why else would be he be so obnoxious, so unapologetic, if he wasn't hiding something? The there's there's no other explanation is there the he he did something he know he did something he's guilty of something a lot of these rich people are anyway especially the people you know white collar workers who have these nice jobs they can get away with anything and at times he doesn't even seem to respect or care about the victims and of course this does make sense from his perspective like he says a lot of people hate him for being rich and this has been going on for decades and they hate him for something that he can't just like turn on or off you know acting as though he was a lamp who you know whether it's light or dark out you might want it on or off you know off or on he can't you know what, what is he supposed to do give away all his money you know, it's he's he. You know, he gives charity. He's he's giving a speech at, at toast something at this big charity ball. You know, it's not like he is just. You know, yeah, he's he's not just. I don't know, building. You know, he he's not building factories that, you know, where he sends like the poorest workers and such. You know. Don't get me wrong, when, whenever rich people do and get away with really ugly behavior, which is a lot, I hate them with a passion. But here, he is rich, and a lot of people who are rich get hated, and some of them really don't deserve A lot of them don't. They, you know, they just, they have more money. They worked for them, a lot of them, and... Yeah, and at the end of the film, you know, at the end of the day, you really see the power of just the accusation made even, you know, even when the accusation is wrong. There's, of course, also power in it when it is the right person being accused. But, yeah, when, yeah, when it is the wrong person and when it's something like murder and, as we find out, almost halfway into the film, rape. That, I, I really like how they, you know, detaching myself from, like I say in the, in the review, rape is an awful thing. I have the utmost of sympathy for anyone who even comes close to a situation like that. But detaching myself from talking about the film, because after all, this is not, this is not an actual case of, it's, it's a piece of fiction. 
I really like that they wait so long before bringing in rape because that really changes things. There's this, at, at first we're talking about, you know, his story doesn't, his story doesn't match up with the others and like details. At first it almost seems like, why did you take him away from the party for, this is just nothing. But then rape, wait a second, because then it is this thing of, does he have like a history with this kind of thing? Does he, how does he talk about, and, and, and you know, we, we hear him say, you know, what, what did you do when you found her? I touched her. I mean, I, I laid my, my ear on, on her chest. And, and even when he says, you know, he tries to fix it, he tries to make it better, but, and, and maybe that was what he did, you know, it's, but, like he said, it looked like she was sleeping because the way, the position, and she had been posed. And, yeah, he looks at the, and, and he says, you know, but both things make him sound like a dirty old man, a creep, and that's kind of what it keeps building on you know this old and creepy man you know being you know around younger girls clearly into younger girls and such and yeah at at the end of the day it's he didn't do it and there are tons of people out there who are in the exact same situation who might be suspected because of the way they are around girls or maybe you know, even if nothing happens, even if just, you know, when, when you see a um, um, grown man hang around with a young woman, you know, immediately there's this sort of suspicion, or if he's alone with a young woman, which again doesn't prove anything, not by itself. And, yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, and, and, you know, part of part of what happens in the, you know, I guess it's the captain's office, is also the coercion and the psychological trauma involved. And again, don't get me wrong. Every accusation of rape should be properly investigated, and you should be absolutely certain that. Either that, you know, before you say that it didn't actually happen or it wasn't actually rape, you should be 100% sure. And before you let someone go who, you know, might, you should be absolutely sure. But we should all accept if someone is found innocent, we shouldn't continue to treat them as though they were guilty, which is, of course, difficult to do during the investigation itself. But that is very difficult to do because the court of public opinion, and this is something that, because why is this man around, you know, girls? Why is this man doing something? There's this perception of women as always victims. So if, if a man is around a woman that he isn't married to, or, you know, otherwise in a romantic relationship with, especially if she's younger, as, you know, obviously, especially if she's underage, you know, you there's this expectation that it must be for sexual reasons when there are plenty of other reasons why it might, you know, yeah, and, and Henry in this is just, he likes being around them because they don't talk, they laugh. They smile and they, they live. They don't have expectations and they don't look at him and think, I could get money out of that guy. They don't, you know, and, and yeah, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's what some people will be like. And there are other reasons yet. It's, but it's difficult to, to look at someone who you don't know for sure isn't guilty and just yeah and unfortunately as much it's a bigger problem obviously that 
rape isn't getting investigated enough or not not taken seriously but it is also necessary to look at the people who have been accused but conclusively found to be innocent and accept that they are innocent and that is something that is incredibly difficult to to do it is something we really have to and that's why i love how this movie like i said in the review it puts you right there it you don't necessarily sympathize with anyone in this movie but it does put you right there and you kind of understand how well if this guy who at the end of the day is innocent we you know they catch the real guy if he can look so guilty then what about people who you know what about people who look a lot less guilty but are still taken because it's different like like they said you know he he used a condom so they don't have dna and they just they have a lot of circumstantial evidence and then what the the person that it points to is the most likely suspect that's what they they say and yeah he and and yeah you imagine well what about people where there were much less evidence and it was just again this creepy kind of guy this guy that you're not sure he didn't do it 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 yeah the movie really makes you think that because through a lot of it you're not entirely sure and at the end of the day there is no conclusive evidence that he did it and at the end he believes it himself because if everybody thinks you did something wrong eventually you accept it the photos do not um, do not mean that he attacked them it means that he was in some way like i said you know he likes being around them he takes pictures because he loves girls in an innocent way at least some of the time he does not yeah it's he he loves these young girls and he celebrates that through photos you know people take pictures of the things they like it doesn't mean that they did something wrong with what they took a picture of even when it is something as potentially potentially really you know yeah lo looking like it might be criminal as you know girls or young women he does cheat and he does do so with young prostitutes we know at least that one who yeah very young but he does not you know and and he but he has not been confirmed to have raped anyone he grooms this young girl and they appear to it's i'm not sure i'd say it's made entirely 100 clear but it sounds like chantal does say that they had sex before she came of age and even if not he still clearly groomed her they met when she was like 11 and it sounds like yeah 14 when her father died and then he took over and became you know he became a surrogate father and then they became lovers and that is also inherently something that sounds you know it it the the roles of a man in relation to a, a woman and and he says this himself you know everyone gives men are always giving these beautiful women what they want you know the father the boyfriend the husband you know it's it changes who it is and changes sort of what exactly the relationship is but their relationship changed between surrogate father and stepdaughter to which again does not mean rape necessarily to yeah lovers and with a major age difference and one of them underage and 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 that being the girl and yeah it's that that doesn't that doesn't look good but i think i suppose the the statute of limitations even if 
someone wanted to press charges or I I'm not sure. Actually, I guess today it would have to be her, but yeah, statute of limitations is almost definitely run out on that. I don't know exactly. I don't know, in her thirties, I presume some something like that. So you know, let's say twenty years or something. And they've been married for ten, so it's not like nothing. Actually, I suppose does that mean that they did marry when she was eighteen? And anyway, still. You know, a number of years has passed, and she doesn't sound like she regrets that that happened. She reveals that it happened, but she doesn't sound like she wishes it didn't. And the, but but yeah, so yeah, obviously it's it's questionable to, yeah, having groomed this young girl and. At the same time, he do, it does not appear like he pressured her. That's not that doesn't it doesn't sound like that when when she tells it, and you know, if yeah, if he wanted to rape her, she is right down the hall. And you know, like he says, when that door is closed, nothing you do can, or when that door is locked, technically. But if he wanted to rape her. He, it's, it's, yeah, if he was determined to rape her, he could, you know, get tools and break down the door one night. And he doesn't. As, as desperate as he has been, as angry as he has been, he never did rape her. And you, you could, you could make the case that maybe he would have if that door hadn't been closed, if that door hadn't been locked, if there hadn't been, what was it, 20 meters between them. But at the end of the day, he did not rape her. He has not been found guilty of rape. At at the most, you could say, what's it called? Statutory rape. And like the movie says, like he says, having a long romantic relationship and not having sex is highly frustrating. And it's been, I think they say it's two years, and that is a long time to not have any relations when again they see each other every day and you know at the start of the film she's wearing you know this tight dress and yeah and and at the end of the day she kind of she's expected to wear something like that out in you know at, at, some, at a glamorous party you know she's she's gonna wear something that you know really shows how beautiful she is I love the ending reveal that it was someone else. I I think I've gotten chills down my spine every single time I've watched, which, like I say in the review, might only be three times, might be four. We don't even see who did it. And the film ends quietly very soon after that reveal. You know, as, as loud and intense as the film got, once we find out that it was someone else, yeah, the, it just kind of quietly ends very soon after that. And now, I hear that in the book, Chantal suicides at the end, which I suppose is what she's about to do when she takes one step, then another, and, you know... And definitely that would have had a stronger impact than, you know, him not forgiving her. And, you know, you could argue that that's not enough, that not, not a big enough, uh, you know, and... and Quiet ending or not, I, I do think that it should maybe have had a little bit more. I'm just saying, you know, not a lot of, like, the character saying I'm sorry or, you know, not something big. But, you know, even just a solemnly done, a, a yeah, suicide scene, I think. But, yeah, the, it is, it is a great image with them both sitting down on the bench and you know you know she she approaches him and she she hasn't looked this emotional in in some kind of you know she's really her her eyes are screaming i'm so sorry and she you know this is the first time that she is trying to touch him in in years and it yeah, 
he he walks past you know he and he sits down and then she goes over and sits down and yeah that's that's it what do you do? we don't know exactly what their future is but yeah this has probably worsened their relationship and yeah this you know how do you how do you what what do you do after that what do you do after believing that you did something that ugly and having revealed all your secrets to you know your your best friend or former best friend and you know another cop and a number of them to you know your wife i mean i really like how they gradually set up you know first we just you know the office and then she comes in and then she's at that other room she can't hear you as long as the door is closed unless i turn there oh please don't okay then and then when they get him in there she can see him can i hear what he says and immediately it's turned on and he doesn't know that he doesn't know that she can hear every word last minute notes I like the speech about how Henry still loves teens. As he says, why would why wouldn't we still? And yeah, there's there's a lot of truth to what he says. And it again, it's it's not okay for men to admit that. It's not okay to be attracted to someone who is underage when I mean for one thing there's a huge difference between being sexually attracted and just thinking they're they're you know they're fun they're full of life like he says and thus taking these pictures you know and then actually being sexually attracted did I already say that anyway and then there's a huge difference between acting on being sexually attracted to minors and not doing so. Now, the it's it's very interesting when when she's first brought in and there's you know she said something interesting Chantal is lying I didn't touch Camille who's Camille and it's that thing of that's what he thinks that she said that's something that he expected her to say and he expected her to say or the, you know his mind goes to I didn't have sex with her I didn't touch her, you know. Not, not nothing less than that. He, you know, and and yeah, that that is part of that is why they haven't had sex in two years. Now, the they also did great casting, and the the girls did great acting, in, you know, that, you know, a lot of it is just them being like really happy and like smiling and such but then you also have these more difficult I I suppose some aren't gonna think it's that impressive but the the second victim lying perfectly still like that in that position with open eyes perfectly still like that is with with Gene Hackman putting his ear on her chest and the whole thing that's really impressive and, and being posed and such and you know I always really empathize with with when someone has to portray being harmed you know the when suddenly they're grabbed by the mouth and and such now before it's revealed that it's you know prostitutes his story makes no when, when when he talks about, oh, you know, I, I walked and then I slept and said, you know, he he left his expensive car, 
drunk and then he found a bench in a poor neighborhood and then he just slept that honestly i'm not sure he would have left alive much less with you know everything intact not having been like mugged or the like you know, out in public, if he, if he had at least claimed, you know, motel, but then I guess, you know, well, which one will go question, but yeah, the man is not a good liar, I suppose you could say, and yeah, of course it was, you know, actually prostitutes, and then he went and had a drink afterwards, and that's also, you know, he says the opposite of Sean, Sean Tall, and that definitely, you know, but it's also this thing of because he's rich and because everybody looks at him and says, oh, he's rich. You know, we see their home art on the walls, you know, rich swing. I mean, we don't see a lot of it, but it's clearly expensive. And yeah, it's just, that's what people see. He's, it's, his world is this, you know, wealth and Part of him really wants something completely different. You know, part of him wants to go completely in the other direction. He's when does he get to have any fun? What what can he really do in this rich world where everybody gossips and everything is always the nicest? And you know, you have to live up to these. You know, so yeah, he goes to the worst of the worst, and yeah, you know. And, and like he also said, you know, in addition to that, you know, there's also, you know, opposite of Chantal, so not, you know, an escort girl with, you know, what was it, Don Perignon, and yeah, so it's, yeah, I'd, I'd say the, the two together. And the 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 bit about how you know he disguises himself he takes off the toupee which is also a great you know yeah let's briefly go over he he actually yeah let me finish this thought first he won't you he i suppose you would click away if you if the answer was no do not turn to another channel. Yeah, he takes off his, his you know, the toupee, he takes off all of his jewelry. He's done this before. It's a habit because he knows that if he walked in there with his jewelry, people would think he's rich and he probably would get mugged. So this is not, this is not a casual, no, 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 he's done this. And, you know, he, there's that thing of, you know, he's, he does it from behind and he does it quick. Now, and, you know, the I, I like how, you know, Chantal gets more and more angry. She hears him when he's behind, you know, behind the glass and confessing and such, and she eventually spits on it. And, you know, his speech where he actually says, and he, it, it comes off so casually, so he must have written this, he must have planned before she said a word to the cops that he was going to say there is nothing as beautiful in this world as the smile of our children and he's saying that to her when you know she doesn't have any and yeah and and there's also that thing of you know she can't have children can't or won't she can't okay she, you know of course i can so yeah anyway yeah at the when it when it comes to how he gradually loses his dignity you know he it's it's the the cigarette at first it's just oh oh i you know oh you have i'll have you know i i have an ashtray don't worry here you go you know he doesn't even ask do do you have somewhere i could you know or do you mind if i smoke in here it's just I want to smoke it. Oh, um, ashtray. Here you go. And, you know, there's the, 
you know, he he starts sweating. So I, actually, I suppose that's later. But yeah, you know, he gets, you know, he's told you have to stay. He's read his rights. You know, very he's humiliating for someone that is used to. He's used to dominating situations. He goes into a room, everybody looks up, and suddenly he's being read his rights. He's being arrested. He's being held on suspicion or probable cause, something like that. And yeah, then you know he he tries to walk out of there, and Felix jumps after you know, jumps runs, and they end up on the stairs. You know he rips part of the sleeve, and he's standing there about to hit him, and the the toupee goes off. You know, and he doesn't. You know, it takes time to arrange something like you know. I assume. So, I don't know. I, but, but yeah, you know, it's going to take him a while and he has to go. It's, you know, the, the speech they're waiting and he goes up and immediately, what happened to his hair? You know, where his, where's his hair? And he's standing up there in front and then later he's, you know, sweating so much and he's, you know, yeah, it's just more and more of his dignity is, is going. And then ultimately he admits he confesses to something that we then find out he he just did not do please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content